If you're planning to go to a park other than Disneyland, you'll want to make sure that you have Yeah, either a rental or drive to the park. Mm -hmm. Well, hello there. You found Elon Musk's premium subscriber service, the best YouTube channel Tesla has to offer. It's driving Miss Disney. <laughs> Can you tell I didn't have like a good open for that one? <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we're sponsored by Tesla, apparently. That's a lie. I lied to the people. And I I'm wish. Sorry. Tesla, if you want to sponsor us. Get us up. We I'll will drive, drive a Tesla to Disneyland. I'll drive a Model S and review your supercharger network the whole way. I don't It'll think I won't. Great. Sponsor um, us. <laughs> yeah, speaking of this, uh, we're talking about how to schedule your Disneyland vacation. Yeah. I'm Logan Johnson, and this is Miss Disney herself, Sydney Willard. Yeah, so to be clear, when we talk about scheduling your Disneyland vacation, we're not talking about booking your Disneyland vacation. No, this is a different thing. It's in a different video. Yeah. Check it out. But, um, yeah, scheduling your Disneyland vacation. So we're going to talk about, like, the whole trip that you're in the Disneyland area, mm -hmm. your whole vacation, what what should the days look like, what else is there to do besides Disneyland in right. Anaheim, California, um, or around that area. Let me start off with my biggest suggestion, my biggest worry-free Disneyland tip, which is to say, if you're the kind of person who thinks you need to be in a particular place at a particular time, do your best to make like Elsa and let it go. Let it go. Yeah. It's really hard to schedule exact times you're going to be somewhere, right? And a lot of times that person, and I, you know, if you're the kind of person, look to your left, look to your right. If you don't see the person who's really, yeah, who's really upset about scheduling, it's you. And that person can be a bit of a downer. Yeah. So try to let that go. Try not to schedule anything too specifically because it's just usually not Especially working. when it comes to Disneyland. Yeah. Um, you can't predict how long the lines are going to be for food, mm -hmm. for the rides. You can't really plan. I mean, you can plan certain things like if you have a reservation to a restaurant. Or a show. Or a show. A time. But... <sighs> try to avoid it when you can. Yeah. The more you try and put yourself to like a particular schedule, the more stressed you're going to be. That's, yeah. That's the experience I've had with it, and I know... People that I have who are that way tend to have a better time when they do their best to let that go. Yeah. Um, however, you should plan where you're going to be each day mm -hmm. um, to have kind of a vague idea of, of what's but going on. But be open to things changing. Totally, because they will. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about what you can do around in the Anaheim area that's not Disneyland. Yeah, let's say that you have a whole week that you're going to Disneyland and only three days in the park. Which <laughs> because is you followed the suggestion in our other video... And you are going for three days. <laughs> yeah, you're going for three or four days, and you have a whole week. You have seven days. So what what else can you do? And for me, my favorite thing to do is just go to a beach. The, Disneyland is really exhausting, especially the older that you yeah. get. Um, it's it's a lot, and so having a day to just go, relax at the beach, and just kind of. You know. There are some good beaches nearby that have shallow water that are mm -hmm. more kid friendly. Google those. Um, try and go out of the way. If you're me, there's some really good sandwich shops down near Oceanside. It's a bit of a drive, but mm -hmm. it's worth going. Um, they're, they're near the beach. You can get the, the sea wind experience while eating at a pavilion by some sandwich shops. I don't remember the name of the one we went to. I'll try and look it up for when we do the food video. Um, if you're uncomfortable with nude beaches, definitely look up where those are beforehand. Yeah. Uh, because in California, they're really common yeah, now. Yeah, they're around, yeah. So um, if you're uncomfortable with that sort of thing, I would definitely just know, kind of do some research on the beaches around, figure out what your thing is. and A little slogan I like to call, know before you go. Yeah. I also like, you're like, figure out what your thing is. <laughs> like, hey. Maybe you are. Maybe into you are into beaches. Figure that out before you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Make sure that you you know where those are. If yeah. You avoid, if you're the kind if of you want to go, or if you want to avoid, um, there's ways to find that out. The yeah. internet's super resourceful for things like that. Yeah, you can find anything like that on the internet. So, um, so how long do you go? We said a week. Yeah. Which has been kind of our gold standard in the past. Yeah, five to seven days is oh, ideal. Yeah. I think if you're gonna start taking in things that are other than Disneyland or, or nearby parks like Universal or Knott's Berry Farm. Um, if you're going to be doing more than that, an extra two-day buffer mm -hmm. to get like beaches or like something like that, if you're going to go for any longer than that, I would say that's when you need to start planning things like cultural events, like go to a museum or go to like, I think there's some observatories in the area, yeah. things like that, and like uh, go spend some time there, go see some art or, or take in some cultural mm -hmm. performances like a play or, or a show 
outside of there. And then you can have kind of a more varied mm -hmm. vacation. But I think you'd start to kind of lose your mind a little bit if you were spending, you know, three days at the beach unless you surf or something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, so there's other things as well, other parks. There's Legoland nearby, mm -hmm. um, there's relatively. There's a great aquarium attached to Legoland, too, mm -hmm. that you get into if you go to Legoland. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and then there's SeaWorld, obviously. So mm -hmm. there's things nearby that you can definitely go totally. and check out if you if you don't want to do Disneyland. In fact, they have like a Southern California Pass that gives you Legoland, three-day park hopper at Disneyland, and a day at SeaWorld. So. Totally. And I've and I've done that, and I think you you have done it as well. Yeah, I have, and and you know, I wasn't when we went to Sea World. I wasn't exactly sure what to expect because you know Sea World's had some bad press recently, mm -hmm. but they've put a lot of investment into like sustainability projects and some rides and things like that, and and it's actually a, a and it's cool, it's pretty relaxed yeah, too. It's, like it's not, nobody no, was there. Yeah, it's really empty. Bad. There's some so. award-winning roller coasters there that you can. Uh, you can get to see. Um, I don't know. I was pregnant at the time. That is Rip. a major bummer. Yeah. Because the Manta is their award. <laughs> I've heard it's coaster, so good. And we would just sit in it. And the ride, the ride attendants would be like, you guys doing this one again? And you'd be like, send us through. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, there's a lot to do. A lot of things you can do kind of in that area. A lot of them, you'll need a car. Yeah. So that's something to, if you're planning to go to a park other than Disneyland, You'll want to make sure that you have Yeah, either a rental or drive to the park. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't want to try and take transit around Southern California no. and figure that out. No. Um, so yeah, how many days in the park do we really need is something we've talked about in another video. Mm -hmm. But yeah, how, we've talked about it in another video, but you know, we said three is a sweet spot, four. Mm -hmm. I think we came down to three is how many you need to see everything. everything. But four is really nice if you want to get the best bang for your buck. And if you want to kind of repeat some of those things that you've loved. Right, exactly. And if you don't go that often. Yeah, yeah. Right? Four's we, really nice. We usually end up there about once every year. So it's like, you know, three days is like, it's pretty easy for us to go review the highlights. Mm -hmm. But when we have three, you know how long it's been since I've been on the Alice in Wonderland ride? Yeah. Really long time, right? Yeah, but if and you have four days, four you can days definitely you can do it. it. Right. So yeah, that's, that's an important thing to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about what a day in Disney looks like. Um, again, we talked about if you're the type of person that has to be somewhere at a certain time, let it go. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's you've got a reservation happen. to like Blue Bayou or something like that, just kind yeah. of breathe. It'll be okay. And a lot of the restaurants that you would need like a reservation ish for, like Laugh Light Lounge, you can kind of just walk up to them and say, "Hey, when can we get a table?" Yeah, and they'll text you. Yeah. And you they'll just say, "Okay, we're looking at about like an hour, two hours. Where, how's your, where's your, what's your phone number?" We'll text you. So how early do you go to Disneyland? So this really, I think, depends. Um, the earlier you get the less get there, the less crowds you'll find um, in the morning. And if you have a magic morning, which if you buy a three-day park hopper or longer, it automatically comes. You get one park magic morning where you get into the park an hour earlier than it opens. Right. Um, so if you really want to maximize that magic morning, um, then you show... you. Get to the park, I would say, a half an hour before your magic morning starts. Totally. So you're at the front of the line. And yeah. You're just going to get in there. Um, yeah. So, but it really depends. If you're the type of person that's like, you know what, I would rather sleep in and go later, then that's totally, totally fine. Do that. Um, just know it does get pretty busy once, like, noon hits. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like the peak when things start to really peak. So the earlier you go, the easier it is to get, like, a fast pass for a ride like Radiator Springs Racers. If you go, that, that, line is always two hours long. Yeah. If you go first thing in the morning over to that fast pass, you can get that really easy. Which brings us to Max Pass, which is something you can get where you can actually get your fast passes on your phone, but you do have to still be at the park. Right. Um so and we'll probably do talk about Max Pass in another video um mm -hmm. when we talk about like tips and trips tips and tricks for riding for as many trips. rides yeah. as, as you can and things like that. But totally. Um, yeah, definitely, if you want to get fast passes for those rides that are going to be gone fast, get to the park early. Um, Rise of the Resistance, um, as far as today, I mean, obviously the park is closed when we're filming yeah, nobody's this. nobody's on Rise of the Resistance right yeah, now. Yeah, but you do have to get to the park at, when it opens and try to get onto a boarding list as soon as possible. Otherwise, you're not riding Rise of the Resistance at all. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So there's no, like, standby line for Rise of the Resistance or anything. There's just mm -hmm. boarding groups right now because... It's just not manageable. Yeah, so. it's busy. Um, let's talk about how late you stay. Okay, so this is another thing. Again, I think it depends on how early you go, but feel yourself out. You know, especially if you have three days. If you have one day, 
I would say open to close. Yeah. Like, do not waste that time that you're having. <laughs> you're paying a lot for that one day. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you're tired and you just want to, I think keep in your head, like, if you go back to your hotel, you're probably not going to want to come back. Sure, we did that one time. Yeah, but it's pretty uncommon. And it's and it's really hard on your body, I think, to like take such a long break and then try to get the motivation to like go back out without sleeping again. Yeah, so but you know, Disney at night is a lot of fun. There's a lot is. of really cool things you can do at night. It's it's there's cool shows, mm-hmm. light shows, fireworks, things like that. My absolute favorite thing to do if if you're gonna stay late once the sun's down. Um, Splash Mountain's really good if you can resist the cold, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, because not a lot of people can, so yeah. you, get, you can ride that one a lot. Um, that was that night that I said, I'm riding this until it breaks down, Yeah. and we went seven times in a row until the timing got kicked off, and we did have to get off the ride. Um, the other thing that I think is really valuable is, when you're staying late, my other favorite ride is Matterhorn Bobsleds is worth staying, um, because if you're like me, you don't ride that one very often, and so you don't really know how it goes. And so when you ride it at night, you can't see the track in front of you. All you can see is like the Yeti yeah. and the caves and the waterfalls and the lights of the park every time you would go into open air. That's one that's really fun and really surprising. It's a little hard on your body to do at night, but it's a lot hard of fun. Hard on your body no matter what. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a tough uh, ride. But you, you, at least when you can see the track in front of you, you can kind of brace for a turn. Right. At night, you're just getting whipped around. And that's what makes it fun, but like... Be ready for that. But yeah, I love nights. It gets colder, especially if it was a really hot day. It's nice to have everything kind of cool down. cool down. The parks really start to empty because really a lot of people come to Disneyland with their kids and the kids are just too tired to keep going past like 8 o'clock. Totally. And also people who live in the area will sometimes go home a little mm-hmm. earlier because they're just coming because they always come. Right? Yeah. Um. Something else to note about like when the parks close, Disneyland is usually open later than California Adventure. California Adventure usually closes around 10. Um. It does change day to day. Yeah. Um, and Disneyland usually closes around midnight. Yeah. So, min- and something to know is that if you're there at 11 o'clock at night, let's say that that's the time that the park closes that day, you can get in line at like 10.59 for a ride and they'll let you ride it. And then you're done. And then you're done. So you don't have to be out of the park at closing time. Especially. Let's talk about the most important closing time event if you've never seen it, which is World of Color. Yeah. In California Adventure, they do this at 9 or 10, depending on what time it's closing. And it's a big light and... I, it's a big water and light and fire show. Yeah, it's really <laughs> um, cool. That goes over some famous Disney scenes with some music and some original soundtrack. Absolutely worth it. It's definitely worth staying that late at least one of your days mm-hmm. to do it. Um, Same with Fantasmic, I think. It's totally. the other one in the, in the other part. Also, light and fire and water. <laughs> yeah, it's they're really cool Pretty shows. Cool. Definitely must sees, um, and I'm not a, like a parade person or a big show person, especially at Disneyland. No, but, but those that, shows are totally different. And when the Main Street Electrical Parade is on, when they bring that back every once in a while, that's also worth yeah. seeing at night. Um, so yeah, a lot of really cool things that you can do. Last thing I want to hit on is with scheduling. When do you eat? And my answer is always. <laughs> yes. But also always. whenever you want. Um, yeah. If you're the kind of person that like. Overeating is a real problem for you, then obviously you know yourself. But if not, like, you're on vacation and all the food pretty much is good. Mm-hmm. Like, just whenever you see a snack and you think that looks good, I would just get it. And, yeah. and when we talked about it in our budgeting video, we went over, like, make sure you have. I talk about how I do $100 a day for food just so mm-hmm. that I can do that um, because it's worth it to me. Um, but yeah, those are our tips for scheduling for Disneyland vacations. Anything you want to add? I think that wraps it up. Um, let us know if you have any more questions on how a Disney day should look. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, you know. Put it down in the comments. Yeah. Anything you want to know, we'll try our best to answer it. And What's yeah. the weird thing that you do when you're on your vacations? Uh, how do you break up the schedule? How do you keep your feet healthy and not hurting? Mm-hmm. Uh, go ahead and put that in the comments. If you like this video, hit subscribe. Go ahead and smash that like button. Um, and we will see you next time.